Welcome back to Crusader of Sinti. Today we're going to finish off the training. First by doing the jump course, then the running jump course. Or the intermediate and the expert course, if you want. Unfortunately, there's not really a lot to say about these. You see, these were designed as tutorials for puzzles that we could see throughout the game. And as such, you're really supposed to have done this particular course, for example, right after you learn how to jump in Dahlia Valley. You know, right at the beginning of the game. Or the, even the running jump course, you're supposed to do it right after you get the hyena. Now there's an advantage to doing it like this. One, you can talk to people and get what limited, you know, enjoyment you get out of talking to NPCs from those guys. And there's actually a few uh, hidden things, like hidden golden apples, I believe, that you needed other abilities for. We have them now, so we can pick them up on the way. But as for the puzzles, nah, it's stuff we've already seen before. In fact, I think that stint in the Tower of Babel kind of covers all of them. In any case, to fill the time, I'm going to read one of the stories I have written, a short story called Wings of Freedom, starring Jay and Melody, my fellow dreamers of the Elsewhere Incorporate. The prince was unceremoniously thrown into the cell. Turning over on the ground, he looked back at the two guards who had escorted him to the chamber. Scrambling to his feet, he grabbed the bars and hissed, You will pay for this! You, your families, your goddamn pets! I'll strangle them with my bare hands! The face of one of the guards went bright red. He stepped forward only to be held back by the other. He's not worth it, she hissed in his ear. He'll feel the headsman's axe tomorrow anyway. The offended guard glared at the jailed prince for a moment long before turning away and heading for the door, the other guard following a moment later. I'll make everyone you ever cared for pay in blood, the prince screamed as she closed the heavy iron door. The only answer he received was a series of heavy clicks followed as the numerous deadbolts slid into place, securing the prince in the cell. Still fuming, the prince looked around at his surroundings. The cell was essentially a heavy iron cage in the center of a small room with metal walls. There were no windows, no doors save the one, and only a small vent to allow the circulation of air. Okay, okay, he said, massaging his temples. This isn't a problem. They'll come to get me once they realize what happened. I just need to wait. He spent the next few hours brooding on his cot, imagining all the horrible and foul things he'd do to the people who'd wronged him. Not just the guards, mind. The prince had a sharp mind and a perfect memory. Every person who wronged him, from the jester who dared to make a joke about the prince, to the king of the miserable little castle in which he was now imprisoned, would feel his wrath. As the hours of night began to wane, the prince felt a slow desperation begin to seep through him. They were supposed to be watching over him. They were supposed to be helping him. Where were they? His ear twitched as one of the deadbolts slid back with a loud thunk. Finally, he said, clambering to his feet and moving as close to the door as his cell allowed. It's about damn time. One by one, the deadbolts slid open. As the doors finally opened with a loud creak... The muffled conversation from the other side became clear. Chinese? We haven't had Chinese in a while, said the first man to enter, a thin fellow in a light robe. A woman with solid black skin and a denim blue newsy cap stepped into the room behind the robed man. I don't know, Jay. Last time we had Chinese, I was sick for a week. How about sushi? Oh, come on, Melody. We do sushi on Friday, and it's only Wednesday. How about Mexicans? Some nachos would be killer right now. Hmm. The woman scratched her chin as she considered. I don't know. I ate Mexican last night with Alan. Where the hell have you two been, said the prince. You're supposed to be keeping me safe. Jeez, man, said the roadman. Chill out already. Chill out? They're going to execute me. Do you know what that means? They're going to kill me. Well, yeah, man, you tried to force yourself on that poor girl. Even if she wasn't in the, wasn't a princess, you'd be in some serious trouble. She was promised to me, said the prince. That makes her my property, and I can do whatever I damn please with her. There was a definite drop in the room temperature at the prince's comment. Melody opened her mouth only to be interrupted by Jay snapping his fingers. Italian, he said, as though it was the most obvious thing in the world. There's a great little bistro I used to visit in New York that makes a fantastic meatball calzone. 
The prince stood dumbfounded, which gave Melody enough time to say, Ooh, that sounds good. Those thongs went straight through me. Maybe a sub sandwich? I'm going to be killed in a couple hours, the prince said. Stop talking about food! Well, we're hungry, Melody snapped. It hasn't been easy keeping an eye on you for the past few weeks. Jay nodded at the prince. Eh, you are a bit of a prad. How dare you, the prince said, his face livid. It isn't for sub-creatures like you to question the bloodline of kings. Sub-creatures? Melody said, not bothering to hide her outrage. Watch it, Norm. We're dreamers. We can alter the fabric of reality with a mere thought. And you have to do what I say. There was an air of smugness about the prince as he continued. That's what you said, right? You're here to make sure I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Jay scratched his bearded chin. That is what I said. And my proper place is obviously on the throne. I am the last heir to King Jonas, not that lowborn thug Matthias. As such, I demand you get me out of here and help me deal with that horrible whelp. Horrible, said Melody as she circled the cage, one finger tapping against the bars. Let's talk about horrible, shall we? The first time we met, you just tried to steal the gold from a traveling merchant. I am to be king, the prince said stiffly. Everything in this realm is mine. Next, Melody continued as though she hadn't heard him. You nearly kicked a beggar to death for the crime of asking for a single coin. The prince snorted. I have no time for such scum. If she couldn't work, she deserved to starve. And the gypsy who gave you a bad fortune? The child who accidentally splashed mud on you. The town crier who had the misfortune of passing just a little too close to your window? If we'd left you to your own devices, how many of them would you have killed and or robbed? You wouldn't understand. I will be king. I must act like a king. Jay snickered. I don't know, Mel. Sounds like a king to me. You're not helping, Melody told her friend. Neither are you. The prince kicked at his cot. He wanted to go flying against the cell walls for dramatic effect, and only ended up with a sore foot when the bolted down cot didn't move an inch. It's not for you to understand, and it's not for you to judge. You may have a point. Jay suddenly grinned. Pizza. For God's sakes, the prince screamed, his voice nearly breaking. Stop talking about food! I command you to get me out of the cell and help me retake the throne, like you said! There was a long pause as the two dreamers traded glances. Let me tell him, Melody asked, clasping her hands together. Please let me tell him. Jay shrugged and waved at the prince. Be my guest. Thank you. Melody graced her partner with a thankful smile before she turned her sights on the prince. We never said anything about installing you on the throne. Don't be stupid, the prince snapped. You said you were here to put me where I was supposed to be. And here you are. Melody leaned closer to the bars, her voice now eerily quiet. In a cell beneath the true king's castle, all ready for the chopping block in the morning. How dare I dare because you would have treated that poor princess like a sex slave until she committed suicide. I dare because you would have murdered innocent people just because you didn't like the look of them. The prince could see literal fire in the depths of Melody's dark red eyes as she said, I dare because you would have led this country to war, all to expand your empire. The prince shrank back from her. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the future, Prince, Melody said as she resumed circling the cell. You see, you didn't need us to retake the throne. A sneaky little bugger like you would have found a way. There are always those tempted by power, and they would have helped you kill the true king just for a chance at it. They wouldn't have gotten it, of course. You'd have killed them as well, just to cover your tracks. Or maybe just because you're a sadistic little bastard. You'd have been stopped eventually, of course. All dictators eventually are. But hundreds of thousands of people would be dead from your influence. Children who would have grown up to be artists or story makers or maybe even dreamers. All dead because of one greedy, beastly, and downright evil little norm. 
Melody faced the prince again, this time with a smile on her face that sent chills down the prince's spine. And now none of that's going to happen. The true king would lead this country into an era of prosperity, all because of us sub-creatures. She held out a fist to her friend. Job well done, Jay. You too, Melody, Jay said, bumping his fist against hers. He then paused, a knowing look in his eyes. I've got it. Wings to go. Melody's smile became genuine, even as a look of horror spread across the prince's face. Ooh, yes, I love their chicken quesadillas. They're not settled. With that, Jay approached the door. With a wave of his hand, it swung shut, and the deadbolt slid back into place. Nice and secure. Jay turned back to the prince. Well, that's that. Assignment's done. Time for us to go. Have a nice light or hour, kid. Wait, the prince said, grabbing the bars as Jay and Melody approached another door that appeared in the previously blank piece of wall. You, you can't just leave me here like this. That's the thing, Melody said as she followed Jay through the door. Leaning her head back into the jail chamber, she smiled at the prince one last time. We can. The door swung shut and vanished, leaving the prince alone in the cell as the first rays of dawn slowly shone over the castle. It was just as well there were no windows. He was too busy screaming to enjoy it anyway. Wow, are we still training? Gee, this is a long course. Well, I hope you liked the short story. Uh, I do want to apologize for the use of the word gypsy. Uh, it's no secret that I actually use... Uh, I actually speak the stories aloud to help the proofreading process. Catching that this time, I'm going to go ahead and change it to just straight up fortune teller. I know it doesn't technically make sense as a, any sort of ethnic slur on Venta, or I actually don't really specify what planet that takes place on, but eh, better safe than sorry. So let's see. Well, I think we're yeah we're on the jumping course. Can't be too much left of this. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, we're, we're not too far from the end. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that was the first short story I wrote for the uh, Elsewhere and Corporate stuff. Not the first Elsewhere story. That was a Dreamer's Night. But uh, I was doing short. It's the first time I came up with an idea for a short story that I thought it really fit well. I always felt that. Especially something like a short story, you need, to, you need to really emphasize the sort of attitude of the Elsewhere in the Corporate. I also didn't have Jay doing very much. And I don't know, if I remember the Elsewhere in the Corporate, you, you want to hear something. I think I originally had the story as a Melody in 2. But uh, it doesn't fit continuity wise because narrative number 2 is a flake and typically avoids work. Besides, I get the impression Melody probably wouldn't want to work with him. Let's see, uh... Got a few more, but I'm kind of hoping I can get better microphone equipment and do, like, proper readings, similar to, like, the creepypasta readings. That way, you know, get somebody nice and high quality, maybe even get someone to do some of the other voices. Would be nice to have a proper Melody. And I'm not a big, you know... I'm not good at the doing other voices, I suppose. Okay, that should kill the flamethrower. I think this is like the only... What's a good term for it? Stall point? It's the only part of the game where I really have... It's really just like puzzles with no real storyline attachment to it. Or obligation, I should say. Unfortunately, we are right at the end now, so... Well, see, I thought there was like a golden apple on this little island here. I was probably thinking that one from earlier. Okay. 662 coins. We're doing pretty good. Still a bit short. And I think we're about to have to use some, too. Sadly. Let's see. Yep, there's a treasure chest. Oh. And bingo. 
we got all the medals. And we just gotta get out of here. Of course, the game is making it easy for us. I think we can bounce here from those of those. I do wish there were more of the, of the elastic puzzles. Oh, speaking of which, I noticed that, um... It'll Do 2 is out. It'll Do is a one I probably will cover later at some point. Not really an inspiration for the Elsewhere universe, but, uh, Definitely a fun little Zelda-ish game. The heavy fo puzzle focus. And a good bit of attitude. I love that in the game. Okay, now all that's left is going to get that sword. Anyway, I was saying I'll probably, um, uh, I would like to do a few more recent games. I'd like to go through my Steam list. I've got like 600 games on Steam, and some of them I don't think I've played once. I'm a bit of a game order. It's going to be even worse now that I just picked up my PlayStation 4. I'm playing Bloodborne, by the way. You can check me out at, uh, Crash underscore Generos. Always looking for more friends, and could definitely use some suggestions of some good PlayStation 4 games. Ah, here we go. This holy sword is a reward. We're the first 14-year-old boy to receive the sword. And he has a feeling we've met before, but he can't point out where. Okay, well, I think... Oh, let's show off our sword to him. <laughs> I'm still annoyed, because the first time I played this, I, I tried, I saved the game, of course, but I tried giving him the silver badge. The fact that you just give it to him and can't get it back kills me. Oh, well. I'm going to go ahead and walk back to the place, but um, we're pretty much done for this episode. Uh, see, shortcut. In any case, we will pick up next time and see what's going on in Iris.